In this video, I want to talk about my four step color grading workflow in Lightroom. We're going to take this image and turn it into this final version. So for the four color grading steps, we're going to start with a bunch of basic adjustments, fixing the exposure, then adjusting the white balance, followed by a little bit of masking where we can target very specific areas of an image. Then we're going to take a look at the color mixer settings for some more specific adjustments to specific colors. And finally, we are getting a little more creative with some split toning, adding colors to our images. With that being said, if you want to follow along, you can find this raw file in the link of the description of this video. And now let's begin. So first off, the basic adjustments. Therefore, we want to head into the basic panel and right away, what we can do to kind of alter the colors of this scene is to change the profile. Lightroom is giving us different options here. For example, the Adobe Neutral Profile is a very flat profile that also means besides lower contrast, we do have less saturation in this image. But I'm aiming for a more colorful scene right here. So instead of a neutral profile, I'm going with Adobe Landscape just to bring up the base saturation of the image. Next up, I'm going to change the exposure of the scene. Right now, the balance between highlights and shadows is not there yet. I wanna change that. So I'm going to bring up the exposure just to brighten up the overall scene. So something like this. I'm also going to bring up the shadows since this scene is still is super dark in those darker areas and raising the shadows just helps with that. I'm also going to increase the blacks, which will further help with the darker areas. Okay, that's looking good so far. Now, the highlights, especially in the sky, are a little bit blown out. I really don't want that at this point of the editing process. So I'm going to bring them down, getting back details from these very bright clouds right there in the sky. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the whites. Beautiful, now the image does look less contrasty. That's exactly what I want, because now I do have a better idea of what the image will look like. And with that in mind, I can now work on the white balance, which is a very, very vital part of the color grading process. So at the moment, you can see the white balance is way too cold because we have this way too strong blue color cast. And since we're working with a sunrise scene, we need to fix that way, way, way to cold white balance. We can easily do that by simply raising the temperature until we get something that looks much more like a sunrise scene. So I want to make it really intense. I'm going to push the temperature a lot in this case. So that's much better instantly. I can also bring up the tint, which will just add some more purple in this image, which works really well together with sunrise colors like these. Okay. You can see the white balance already causes a huge transformation for this image. That's also always the first step in my color grading process, adjusting the white balance. Of course, that's hugely dependent on the scene we are working with. A sunrise scene needs to be warmer. On the other hand, in nighttime shot, of course, you want to have some colder colors. So you really have to make it dependent on the scene. Next up, I'm going to bring up the vibrance because, of course, I want this image to be saturated and the vibrance is a perfect tool for that. I'm also going to bring up the texture just to sharpen the image. I'm going to bring up the clarity for some more midtones contrast. And I'm going to bring down the dehaze because I want this image to look a little more dreamy. And negative dehaze works great for that. All right, I think that's it for the basic adjustments. Now let's take a look at before we are quick. And you can see a huge difference already thanks to the adjusted white balance but also thanks to the adjusted tonal adjustments with the raised shadows, having much more details in every part of the image. Now for the next step, I'm going to use masks with which we can target specific areas of the image and adjust the colors within these areas. So that's really, really, really helpful. I'm going to open up the masking panel right here and I'm going to start to work on the sky. So let's use a sky selection mask and then I want to work on a very specific part of the sky. So I need to intersect this mask. I'm going to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose a radial gradient. With that radial gradient, I'm going to target kind of the area behind the subject, which is the brightest part of the sky. And this area I want to make even warmer with targeted adjustments. And a great tool to do that is the white balance slider within those masks. 
That means I can bring up the temperature and further introduce warmth to this particular spot. I can also bring up the saturation to make the colors in this area more intense. I do have a feeling I need to make this area a little bit brighter, giving us some cool light effect behind the subject. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the blacks for a little extra glow behind the subject. And I'm also going to bring up the exposure. Of course, we're dealing with a little bit of overexposure in the very bright clouds, but I think in this case, that's totally fine in order to get this light effect. So let's raise it like that. Okay. There's one more thing we can do to add color through masks. And that's this little color box right here. So let's click on it. Here we can add a specific color tone to this particular mask. I'm going to make it even warmer by choosing a orange color tone somewhere around here and simply bringing up the saturation some more in order for this effect to become visible. So I think that's looking great. Let's deactivate this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. You see, this mask already makes a huge difference, but of course we can continue. So let me add a little more punch to the sky. I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm targeting the blues of the sky, which I want to make darker. Let's maybe bring down the refine slider a bit to filter out some of these clouds. Of course, I also want to target the sky, but at the moment, we also have parts of the subject selected. So we once more need to intersect this mask. So click on those retorts, intersect mask with, and choose select sky. And finally, I only want to affect the top part of the sky. Therefore, I'm going to subject a linear gradient. And with that linear gradient, I'm just taking out the bottom part right here. Now we have a perfect mask for the blue part of the sky at the very top, which we can now make darker. I'm not directly changing the colors, but watch what happens next. I'm going to bring down the exposure very gently. I'm also going to bring up the contrast and I'm going to drop the blacks. All right, that's looking good. Now what we have done is to make the blue part of the sky darker. We didn't directly affect the colors, but since we made it darker, we made the blue tones more intense and it kind of looks more saturated. Next up, Let's also work on the subject. I'm going to create a simple select subject mask, which should work fine in this case. Beautiful. And I want to make it a little more brighter to make it pop. Therefore, let me just raise the exposure gently. We don't want to overdo it because and that would look too unnatural, I guess. And I'm also going to bring up the whites to further add a bit of brightness here. Then, of course, the foreground also needs a bit of work. Let's start with a simple radial gradient. And I want to target the floor right below the subject. And since I only want to target the floor, I need to subtract a linear gradient with which I'm going to get rid of the upper half of that radial gradient like that. In here, I'm going to add a lot of clarity to give the structure of the ground just more texture. I do want to add some further contrast by making the blacks of the foreground deeper. So let's use another color range mask and I'm going to click right here in the black part of the foreground. Right away, I think the color range is a bit too wide. I'm going to use the refine slider once more and just tone it down a little bit. And I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient from the top because I only want to affect the foreground. Then all I need to do is to add a bit more contrast to give that whole area more punch and just make it look more interesting. Of course, we can also work on the brighter parts of the foreground. Therefore, let's use a luminance range mask and I'm going to click right in here. Again, we need to further refine that range mask. So let's filter out the darkest parts by bringing up this point. And I'm going to bring up this point as well to target all the bright tones of the foreground. And let's see, I think that's looking pretty good. Again, we need to subtract a linear gradient coming down from the top like this. And now all I need to do is to bring up the whites, adding some more punch. So this makes the whole texture right here a lot more visible. And another thing I wanna do is to add a hint of blue in this texture. Therefore, I'm going to use the white balance slider again and just bring down the temperature notch. All right, I think that blue tone right here in the foreground looks perfect. 
Then one more mask and we're done with step two of the color grading process. I'm going to create a radial gradient and I'm going to place it in the sky right here. And I want to make it overlap the subject because I want to add some stronger glow effect right here. And all I need to do for that is to bring up the blacks. And this will create this beautiful light spill effect. We can even bring down the dehaze if we want to make it really strong. I do want to make it really strong, so let's drop it a bit. Due to these adjustments, we are losing a bit of color in this area. But that's not a big deal, since we can simply again use the temperature slider. Let's bring up the temperature, introducing some more warmer tones in that glow area. Beautiful. And that's it for the masking adjustments. Let's take a look at the difference from before to after. So masking for me is mostly about adding contrast, guiding the viewer's eye, in this case, making the subject stand out. But of course, we're also altering the colors of certain areas. For this image, it was mostly the sky by making the brighter areas of the sky a lot warmer. So next up for color grading step number three, we are going to take a look at the color mixer panel. Let's open it up. Here we can adjust a few different things. We can change the hue, the saturation and the luminance for each of these color tones. So what I want to do is to start with the hue. Usually for sunrise images like these, what I like to do is to alter the yellow or the orange color tones a little bit, giving them more of a red color tone, just because I prefer it that way. So if you don't like that, of course you don't have to do it. But what I'm going to do is to bring down the orange hue very gently. And I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue, turning all these yellow clouds into orange looking clouds like that. Looks much better to me. We can also bring down the blue hue, which will alter the sky, giving the whole sky a bit more of a cyan color tone, which of course works great together, coupled with these orange tones. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead, open up the saturation tab. Here my approach is to make the main colors of the image way more vibrant. So that means I'm going to bring up the orange tones, because the main colors of this image are definitely the warm orange tones of the sunrise. Let's bring them up a little further like this. I'm also going to push the yellow tones, of course, because of these clouds. And we could even push the red tones. Maybe this will do something. Now, depending on what you like, we could bring down the blue saturation. This would make the other warmer tones appear to be more saturated. In this case, I usually like my images way more vibrant. So I'm going to bring up the blue saturation as well, but just a little bit like that. Now the sky is looking much, much better already. Let's also check out the luminance tab. Here we can adjust the brightness of each color. And that's really, really helpful. Let me give you another example with the sky. We can use the blue luminance slider and make it darker by bringing down the blue luminance. This will not only make the blue tones darker, but they will also appear to be a little more saturated. So that's kind of important to keep in mind if you're working with luminance. Let's bring it down like this. And then I want to bring up the luminance of the orange tones just a bit, adding kind of more contrast to the sky this way. And I'm also going to bring up the yellow luminance a little bit. All right, that's looking good. That's already it for the color mixer. So you see, color grading step three for me is just tiny, tiny adjustments to specific colors. But for the last step, we're going to apply split toning. And that's my favorite color grading tool of all time, because we can get really, really creative right in here. We can target highlights, the midtones and the shadows and give them a very specific color tone. And that's great because for example, for this image, we can now target the highlights and give them a way warmer look by setting up the hue. So let me choose a color right here in the orange color range. So after setting up the hue, not much will happen. But if you push the saturation, you can see the image changing completely. And that's why I love the split toning so much. Because we can get really, really creative in here. I'm going to pump up the saturation almost all the way. Let's go with something like this. And that looks perfect to me. Now I'm also going to use the midtones to further emphasize the warmer color tones. Again, we need to set up the hue somewhere around here. And again, I'm going to bring up the saturation. Usually with the midtones, I don't like going too crazy with the saturation because you can see 
it's just looking way too vibrant. I'm going to bring down the saturation to around 15, which I think is a great spot for the midtones. Now we want to keep a bit of color contrast and therefore I'm going to use the shadows. Here I'm going to apply a cold blue hue and I'm going to slightly raise the saturation to have a hint of blue right here in the darkest parts of the image, which makes it look much better. We also can use a global color wheel, making the whole shot look a bit warmer. So let's bring up the hue and let's bring up the saturation a bit. All right, and that's it for step number four. At this point, I also want to show you a bonus color grading feature, which I use pretty much all the time. I'm calling it a bonus because it's not really meant for color grading, but more for calibration. That's also why the tool is called calibration tool right here at the very bottom of the Lightroom panels. So this is intended for a completely different purpose, but playing around with these sliders really enhances images in a very pleasing way. What I do for my images is to use the blue primary hue and bring it down. You might think the blue primary hue will only affect the blue tones, but these sliders are a little bit weird in a way, because when I bring down the blue primary hue, it will change the blue tones, but also the colors on the opposite side of the color wheel. So in that case, it would be something in the orange range, which, which also is affected. You can see that when I bring down the blue primary hue, the clouds in this image will also change. And that's one of the reasons why this is such a great tool, although it's not intended for color grading. And so let me bring down the blue primary hue like this, and I'm also going to push the saturation because it just looks good. And for the calibration sliders, what I would suggest is to just play around with these. At least to me, these are kind of hard to understand. So I'm always just dragging the sliders in either direction and see what looks good. So I would say let's also bring up the red primary hue. And at this point we are done with the color grading. Of course, this is not the only color grading workflow. This is just my personal workflow with which I have the most experience and I think I get the best results out of it. Of course, there are many different ways of how to approach this color grading process. This video is just there to show you my approach of color grading and editing images in Lightroom. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video.